Sorry, you discovered this beloved book back in 2014. How soon after reading the novel did you realize you wanted to adapt it for the big screen? And how has it impacted your life both creatively and professionally? It was instant. It was while I was reading the book, I saw the film and I thought it was so obvious because his uh, Ben's writing is just so beautiful and so lyrical and so cinematic that to me, like anybody that read the book would have seen the movie. So I was like, the rights, there's no way the rights are available for this because it's just like obviously like itching to be um, a movie, but they were and here we are. Um, so it was, to answer that question, it was very, like it was as I was reading it, which was what made it so fun to read. It was just like, I saw the movie in my head so very clearly. Um, <clears throat> the book has been a parallel to me in my personal life and the evolution of myself and um, walking into my own truth, which I think is similar to some of the characters in yeah. the film and in the book. Um, so that goes without saying, and it was like very subconscious too. It was sort of like in hindsight, oh, this book has accompanied me on my own personal journey, which in turn has been a direct one-to-one -one of my professional career because like this is this is the book that made me solely focus on writing and directing because I would I would had a like I was directing and writing and some acting so I was still trying to find my way in the industry but once I read this it really felt like oh these are the stories I want to tell mm. and I focus on telling stories like this so it just like unlocked something in me um, on so many levels. Great answer. And you know, as you're working on a project that's existed on, in another medium, what's one thing that you wanted to make sure was translated from page to screen? And what's something new that you brought to it? Uh, the essence of what it was, I was very hopeful that I could maintain that. That was very important to me. There was There's a certain way that Ben writes that made it a unique experience to read the book. And I wanted the mm. film to have that. And I keep hearing from people that it felt like watching the movie felt like reading the book. And that's the biggest compliment because that was the goal. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that was also really hard for me. Like, I had to let it go at a certain point of like, oh, like I'm working in a new medium and like I'm at the helm of this. And like, I'm, I'm going to give myself permission to sort of like bring my own life experience in, find the nuances that I could infuse into it. So like one specific example that I could tell you is like the, the Ophelia or Aunt Ophelia in the book is there and she's present, but I felt like she was such a perfect opportunity to do a lot of heavy lifting mm -hmm. um, within the narrative. So she's someone, a character that I brought to the forefront that's not necessarily in the book. You've been very open about the adversity that you faced as you brought the story to life with many doubting that you were the right person to be at the helm of this film. How were you able to channel that ne ne negativity and your own journey of self-discovery into this beautiful film? Thank you so much for that. I think it's um, some things you just know and other people need to catch up to it. Mm. So during the process, I always knew it was my story to tell. And like, I allowed people to sort of like go on their own journey. I was like, yeah, let's try this director. Let's go take it here. And like, I was like, sure, let's let's do that. But something inside of me just like knew that none of those versions of it were ever gonna work because I was the one that was supposed to be sitting there. And like, there was, you know, my own evolution, which I'm grateful for, which I think made me really ready to tell the story. And also like creatively, um, and, and professionally within the industry, you know, I was started writing for television. I was learning more. So all of those things were really valuable to make it undeniable um, on all ends when I, it was time for me to step into the directors. You know, both of your leads are newcomers to this industry and they deliver such terrific performances. What was that process like finding each of them? And how were, how were you as a director able to create this space for them to explore their unique characters' journeys of self-discovery? Yeah, I mean, that's like you say a lot in that statement because it was finding two boys that were these characters where I did, they didn't have to act, right? Mm. Like acting was, <clears throat> excuse me, was the exploration of how you could push your talent, right? But um, 
to me, they had to like innately be these characters. And of course, Max and Reese are different people, but they, the essence of who they are is these characters. So I, my job was to nurture this like very safe trust circle between the three of us where they were able to explore their vulnerability uh, on set in front of the camera. And that was just like having really intense conversations with both of them, them going and doing their own writing process. Like mm. I gave them the freedom to sort of like explore their characters, how they saw fit. And then we would come back and sort of like have a conversation about what they discovered and what they thought. Um, and a lot of that work was like done before we got to set because we were shooting so many pages a day that we didn't have time to sort of like play and rehearse, right? Um, but that they were so, it was so like deeply rooted into them that it made my job a lot easier. And you know, this is also your feature directorial debut. Congratulations, by the way. What's been the most surprising part about this experience and what have you learned about your craft as a storyteller? <laughs> um, that's a hard question to answer because I feel like I'm always learning so many different things and it's like different aspects of not only myself, but like how the industry works and all of those little things that you never think about, but once you're in them, they're like, they matter, right? Um, so I hope I never stop learning. But what I did learn from this is that you never have enough time, which is a cliche to, thing to say, but it's like create time on my next one to do the very thing of like exploring with the actors on camera a little bit more of trying things that maybe are wrong. Um, mm. So that's something that I learned um, about my craft for sure. Great answer. And there's so many powerful moments within this film as it makes its way into theaters today. Is there a scene in particular that you're really excited for audiences to see? What do you hope they take away? I think one of the most powerful scenes is it's, it's, it's a powerful scene in the story, but the reason it resonates so much with me and I like often choose it as my favorite is the scene on the porch with uh, Ari and his parents. Yeah. We had the most time to shoot that scene and there was also this really special thing that happened on set where I think everybody realized what we were working on and how much this story was not only important, but urgent and it mattered. And it, there wasn't a dry eye on set that day. And my mom and my grandmother were there, which also made it like extra special. Mm. So there was this like synergy that happened that day that just I feel really translates on screen. Yeah. Love that. I got one final question for you. I know that you're enjoying the moment right now, but I know that there's also another book that explores the relationship between these two characters. Have there been any early conversations about potentially doing a sequel? I mean, the conversation's been had, especially with Ben and I. I think that the reality is that we need to make sure that this movie does well to make it again undeniable. Um, that this is, you know, these characters are worthy of continuing to live and that people want to see them.